<clears throat> All right, welcome. Here's our chapter one review problems for the study guide for our chapter one test. So let's get started. Uh, if A is the midpoint of CM, find the length of AM. Okay, first things first, look for keywords. So keyword here, midpoint. Um, and then next we want to go ahead and draw a picture. So A is the midpoint of CM. So we have a segment here, CM, and A is the midpoint. If I know A is the midpoint, then I know it's going to break the segment into two congruent pieces. So those are two little congruent marks. And it says AM um, is what we want to find. So I'm going to just write over here off to the side. that I want to eventually find the length of AM. And I'm looking at segments. This is a line segment here. because the little line above it with no arrows. It says CA is 2X minus 3. And CM is 5X minus 11. Okay. So that was kind of a trick right there. Uh, this piece we know, and this piece we know. Um, if you set these equal to each other, you would get it wrong. And you can clearly see in my picture, because I drew it, it wouldn't make any sense to set them equal to each other. But I do know this is equal, so this also has to be congruent. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and add two of these together to equal the whole piece using angle addition postulate. So we get 4x minus 6 equals 5x minus 11. I'm going to subtract the 4x over here and add the 11 over here. That's going to leave me with x equals 5. Again, I'm just trying to solve for am, and am is the same because they're congruent. So we're going to be able to get 2 times 5 minus 3. That's going to be 10 minus 3, which is going to give me 7. Okay. And we can also plug it in here. And we should get 14 uh, for that. So 5 times 5 is 25, minus 11 is 14, which would be the full length. And there we go. Number two, where does the line intersect the plane? Okay. Um, so they broke it down after that. Uh, name the intersection of the line and the plane. So it would be point H. So this is a line. It's going through the plane. This is kind of like a dotted line. So point H is where they intersect. Name two coplanar points. Uh, well, the two points would be M and H. They're the only two points on the plane. R is beneath the plane, and D is above the plane. Name two points that are collinear. Um, well, D, H, R are all on the same line, even though they're not coplanar, that's okay. But they're all on the same, they're not on this plane at least, but these two uh, right here, H and R, or D and H, or D and R. Let's just do D and R. Okay, the whole time I'm just naming points. Um, so I can write word point in front of if I want to be really clear, or I can just write the letter. All right, the distance between the two points. Key thing first is label X1, Y1, X2, Y2. And then we want to go ahead and write the distance formula. Okay, distance is the distance between things. So we're going to subtract our x's, and we're going to subtract our y's, but then we end up squaring them. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see if we can solve. x2 is going to be um, negative 8 minus x1, which is a negative 2. And then we have uh, y2, which is negative 3 minus y1, which is 4 squared. We do have two negatives, so these two negatives here become positive. We get negative 8 plus 2, which is going to give me a negative 6 squared, which is going to give me 36 plus plus. And then negative 3 and negative 4 is going to make negative 7 squared. I'm going to get 49. And then we're going to use our calculator. We could add these in our head, 36 plus 49, and we're going to get the square root of 85. Now, square root 85 is not a perfect square, um, so we can just turn this into a decimal answer. And we actually can't break square root 85, but we get 9.2. On the test, I'll tell you how to round. 9.2 is what we're going to come up with. Okay. Number four. Find the midpoint of CH if C has the following coordinates and H has this coordinate. So... We are finding the midpoint of CH, so we have C and H, so we just need to use the midpoint formula and label our points. So 
So x1, y1, x2, y2. And our midpoint is going to be equal to uh, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And plugging those in, it's just negative 5 plus 9 divided by 2. And then we're going to get negative 4 plus a negative 2 divided by 2 for those. Um, over here, we're going to get 4 divided by 2, which is going to become 2. This is going to become negative 6 divided by 2, which is negative 3. Given the midpoint M of CH with the coordinates 5, comma, negative 3, H has the coordinates of negative 1, negative, let me just see if I can focus this a little bit better, that's better, negative 9, negative 1, find the coordinate of C. So this is kind of uh, an interesting one where I'm going to draw a picture um, to explain this one. We can ex do this one in algebra in class again too, but given the endpoint M, we have coordinates C and H, okay? Um, it, the endpoint M is 5, 3, and H has the coordinates of negative 1, negative, or negative 9, negative 1. And over here, we don't know what the answer is, okay? So using kind of that principle of how far things are away, um, so our question is, how would I go from negative 9 to 5? Okay, so how would I get from negative 9 to 5. Well, I'm going from a negative to a positive, so I do have to add. So I'm going to add. Um, so I have to add all the way up to 9, and I have to add additional 5 more. So I think I'm going to be adding 14. And since m is the midpoint, so if I go 14 to go from the endpoint to the midpoint, to go from the midpoint to the other midpoint, I'm going to have to do the exact same math. And that's going to be adding 14 again. And that will leave me with 5 plus 14, which is going to give me 19 as the value. We can do the same thing with the y values. How do I go from negative 1 to 3? Well, again, I should be adding here. And this time it looks like I'm adding 1 to get to 0 and then 3 more. So I'm adding 4. And then I'm going to have to do it again. So 4 plus 3 is 7. Um, another way that you can check, so here's our final answer. Another way you can check is you can plug these two points into the midpoint formula, and you should get this value, 5, comma, negative 3. We can just do it really quick. 19 minus 9, you know, 19 plus a negative 9 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5, so that works. 7 plus a negative 1 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So you can quickly check using the midpoint formula. But our answer is 19, comma, 7. Draw a picture to explain the segment addition postulate. Um, segment addition postulate is pretty simple. Um, let's just say A, B, C. So segment addition postulate says segment A, B plus segment B, C should equal segment A, C. Okay, there it is. And we can even do some colors if you like. So there's that segment. There's that segment. And then if we wrap all that together, that's that segment. Okay. Draw a picture to explain the angle addition postulate. Okay. We can go put some points in here A, B, C, D. So I could say angle A, B, C plus angle C, B, D should equal angle. Kind of ran out of room there, A, B, D. And again, we could use some colors here. Yellow for this angle, plus pink for this angle, should equal the entire angle, A, B, D. Find X and Y in all angle measurements. Um, so first of all, uh, we know that these are a linear pair. And these are a linear pair, so they should add up to 180. Well, this equation is not going to work, but this one will. So we're going to get 25x plus 8 plus 9x plus 2 equals 180. Okay? They're all like terms, so we can use those two. Okay, so 9x plus 8, so we're going to get, sorry, 25x plus 9x is going to give us 34x. 8 plus 2 is 10, equals 180. Subtract that. 
And we're going to get 170, and then I don't know this off the top of my head, but we're going to divide and get x equals 5. So we got 5. Now we want to find y. Well, if I know this is 5, I can plug it in 25 times 5. So we get uh, 25 times 5 plus 8. That's going to be 133. So we get 133 for that measure right there. And then we're going to go ahead and um, find the next piece right here, 7y plus 5. And so we're going to do 7y plus 5 plus 133 equals 180. And we can go ahead and combine like terms, 7y uh, plus, this is going to become 138 equals 180. We're going to subtract that number, 138, from 180. So we get 7y equals 42. And then divide by 7, and we're going to get y equals 6. Kind of went off the page there with a lot of work. Okay. All right, let's flip it over to the next page. Now, this problem right here, you don't have to do. We have not talked about skew lines yet, so you don't worry about it. So you can skip. Okay. Um, but the next one we have to read over here. The following diagram, which we didn't give you, C is the midpoint of AE. So let's go ahead and draw a picture real quick. We have AE and C is the midpoint. So we're going to put some segments there. Okay. Uh, B is the midpoint of AC. So B is the midpoint of AC. So that means B is probably right about here. Okay. And CD is uh, 3. And AB is 7. Okay. So again, C is the midpoint of AE. B is the midpoint of, of AC. CD is 3. And AB is 7. So I'm assuming there we go. There's 7 right there. So that's 7. Then that's going to be 7. Okay. And the lights go down in the city. There they are in the back. Um, so we know that these two are congruent. And then um, CD is 3. Now they didn't give us D in this picture. So I think there's an error here um, with that. So it's going to be kind of difficult. So we're going to ignore that piece right now. Sorry about that. Um, and so we get 7 and 7 right here. So this whole piece right here is 14, which means this whole piece is 14. Um, so the length of the whole thing is going to be 28. So it's kind of a weird one. I think we're missing some information there, and I apologize. All right, here we go. We're back on track. R, S, T, or collinear. S is between R and T. We get some... Measurements, use a segment to posture itself for W, then determine the length of RS. Okay, first of all, draw a picture. Always a good idea. RS and T are cool. And S is between R and T. So R is here, T is here, S is between. Now, notice I'm putting it kind of off kilter, and that's because between does not mean in the middle, necessarily. So we don't want to assume that. So RS is 2W plus 1. ST is W minus 1. And then the whole thing, RT, is 18. So we can use segment addition postulate here to solve this. And so we're just going to do 2W plus 1 plus W minus 1 equals 18. This is going to become 3W equals 18. W equals 6. So we get 6 as our value. And then to find RS, we're going to plug it back in here. So it's going to be 2 times 6 plus 1, which should give us 13 as our value. Mark the following in the diagram. C is the midpoint of RT. So C is the midpoint of RT. So that means these two segments are congruent. And angle WCV, WCV, so this angle right there, okay, WCV, is congruent to VCT. So this angle right here, those are congruent, so we can mark that with some congruency angles just like that. Okay? So name a ray to CT, opposite to CT. Well, C going to T, the opposite would be C to R. 
starting at C, heading towards R. Sorry, we went a little black, 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 black ops right there. So C T is going C to T, so we are going C to R. Name two congruent segments. So we get S C plus C W equals it should be S W. That's segment addition postulate. Okay. Name two congruent segments. I'm sorry, I kind of skipped that one. That'd be C T and C R. C T and C R. Sorry, I didn't give you guys a lot of space here. Uh, let's zoom in then in that situation because of that. Um, C is the blank of RCS. RCS, C is the vertex of that. The sides of RCW are RCW, so it's going to be CW ray, because it's going towards W infinitely, and then it's going to be CR ray, going towards R infinitely. Name an angle bisector. Well, these two angles are congruent, so CV is an angle bisector. VCT and TCS add together to make VCS. WCT equals 40. Then what's WCV? Well, if these two are congruent, that means they would each have to be 20. If they were both, if it was 50, then each one would have to be half of that, which is 25. So I just basically took 40 divided by 2 because I know each one's 20, and then I did the same thing to get 25. Okay? All right. Number 12, use the answer, uh, use the figure to answer the following question. If angle 6 equals 180, sorry, 80, and what does angle 5 equal? Well, 5 and 6 are a linear pair, so that's going to equal 100. 80 plus 100 gives us 180. Angle 9 appears to be A or an, and it appears to be a cube, but again, we don't want to judge it based solely on that because it does look like it's less than 90 because we see there's a 90 there, and it's not the full thing. The measure, that's what M stands for, the measure of G H L. Well, if there's a 90 there, this is linear pair, so it's going to be 90. Because 90 in this box plus 90 here would make 180. And 9 and 8, what would they add up to? Well, they're going to be a complementary pair because there's that little box right here. This is kind of my giveaway. That little box that I just put in red. And that's why I'm setting it equal to 90. So we're going to get 5x plus 5 equals 90. Subtract 5, we get 5x equals 85. And 5 goes into 85 17 times. A little off the page. Okay. Moving on over, use the figure to answer the following questions. ABD, ABD plus DBC should equal 180 degrees. Um, or angle ABC. So we could also say ABC. So the measure of ABC um, could be that. If BF bisects ABE, then angle 1 and angle what? Well, if BF is bisecting AB, then 1 and 2 will be congruent. Angle 2 plus angle 3 is going to equal the measure of FBC. Mm -hmm. Another name for angle 3 is, angle 3 would be EBC. EBC. Or CBE would also work. 3 is adjacent to what other acute angle? We could say angle 2. Or FBE. Okay. Whew. That's a lot of problems, huh? All right, so use the figure below to answer the following questions. KJ and KM are opposite rays. Cool. KN bisects JKL, so I know these two are congruent. They don't look congruent, but I know they are. Make sure to draw in congruency marks. Okay, done. So we're going to use the following below. So here we go. JKN, now this is where I'm going to use a pencil because it looks like we're using the same picture for multiple times. So JK 
kn is 8x minus 13. In KL is 6x plus 11, find JKN, okay? Well, they're congruent because I see the two congruency marks, so all I have to do is add them, uh, sorry, not add them, set them equal to each other. Subtract 6x, I get 2x minus 13 equals 11, okay? And then I'm gonna add 13 over, and I'm gonna get 24, and x equals 12. A, which is important, but not my final answer. I need to find this. I'm going to plug it back in to JKN. So we're going to get 8 times 12 minus 13. 8 times 12 is going to be 96 minus 13. It's going to give me 83 is the measure of JKN. Okay? So while I'm erasing this right now, I want to let you know that the secret word is spider monkey. So on the test, if you draw a picture of a spider monkey on the front page, I will give you extra credit. If you don't know what it looks like, look it up. Oh yeah, don't tell everybody. So next one, JKL. So we're going to use this information in our photo. JKL. JKL, so that's the entire angle. It is 9Y plus 15. JKN is 5Y plus 2. Okay? Well... If this is 5y plus 2, this is also 5y plus 2. And now I can use angle addition postulate where I'm going to add both of these together. So it's going to be 5y plus 2 plus 5y plus 2 should equal the entire angle of 9y plus 15. Again, these answers, they don't, they work off the same picture, but they don't have the same values. So we're going to get 10y plus 4 equals 9y plus 15. We're going to subtract the 9y and subtract the 4 at the same time. That will cancel there. That will cancel there. And we get y equals 11. And then we got to plug it in back for jkl, which is right here. We're going to get 9 times 11 plus 15. It's going to be 99 plus 15, which is going to give me 114 for the angle measure of jkl. Dude, I kind of sound boring right now. That's okay. All right, so go back to our picture. I already have it drawn, so I was using pencil so I could lightly color in stuff. So this one's gonna be a little hard. I'm gonna just look at the picture, but it says JKN is 3X plus 30. So we got 3X plus 30. And then LKN, LKM, sorry, is 2X. All right, well, if that's 3X plus 10, this is also 3X plus, sorry, 30. So if I add all three of those together, I should get my value equal to 180. So we're going to get 3x plus 30 plus 3x plus 30 plus that 2x should all equal 180. Let's do some math. Okay, 3x, 3x, 2x, that's going to become 8x. 30 plus 30 is 60. That equals 180. So we get 8x equals, subtract that, we get 120. And just to be on the careful side, we're going to get x equals 15. So we're supposed to find it. Now, NKL, uh, NKL is the same as this. So we can really just do 3 times 15 plus 30. Um, so that's going to be 45 plus 30, which is 75. So the measure of NKL is going to be 75 degrees. Pachow. Oh, finally, the back page. This is taking some time. All right, let's get our things lined up. Collinear, points that lie on the same plane. Yes, done. Midpoint formula, yes, there we are. This one's kind of just like, let's just get the answers. A ray that divides an angle into two congruent parts. Is that a segment bisector? Mm, no, it's close. Um, a segment line or plane that intersects a segment at its midpoint. That would work because it breaks up a what? Segment. Uh, a plane, uh, let's see, a basic underturned plane that has no size and represented by a dot. That sounds like a point. A flat surface extends indefinitely in all directions. That sounds like a plane. Distance formula, that's an easy one. Congruent angles, angles that have the equal measure. Yay, I like that one. H-I. 
There we go. All right. Now, supplementary angles, they add to what? 180. So we're just going to take these two and then add it to 180. So we get 12x equals 180. And we're going to divide. And we get x equals 15. And so 4 times 15 is going to be, um, what is that going to be? 60. And 8 times 15 is going to be 120. All right, next one, we'll switch colors. They're complementary, so we're gonna add them up. And this time we're gonna set them equal to 90. So we get 2x plus 24 equals 90. Subtract the 24, and we're gonna get 2x equals 66, so x equals 33. And we're gonna plug it in. Well, this one's easy, it's just 33. And then I think the other one's 33 plus 24, um, which is going to give me 57. And if you add those together, you should get 90. All right, switch colors again. If two lines intersect to form angles, if the two adjacent angles are 4x and 5x minus 12, then what is the measure? Two lines intersect. Two lines intersect to form an angle. If the two adjacent angles are 4x, and 5x minus 27. What's the measure? Well, this is a linear pair, so we're just going to add them up and set them equal to 180. So we're going to get 9x minus 27 equals 180. We're going to add the 27 over, so 9x equals 207. And then when we divide by 9, we're going to get 23. Okay. And 23 times 4 is going to give us 92 for this angle. And then 5 times 23 minus 27, just plugging in my calculator, is going to give me 88. And that, in fact, does add up to 180. Angle 1 and 2 form vertical angles. Uh, find x in the measure of both. Um, we haven't talked that about that uh, vertical angles are congruent. But you would set those two equal to each other, but I'm going to skip that one. And the measure of supplement of an angle is 30 more than twice the measure of its angle. Find the measure of the angles. Uh, supplement means we're having two angles add up to 180. Okay? So the supplement of an angle is 30 more than twice the measure of the other. So the other angle we'll call x. So we got x plus this other angle equals 180. Well, it's twice the measure of this one plus 30. So we're going to do that, okay? So we're going to get 3x plus 30 equals 180. Subtract, we got 3x equals 150. And 150 divided by 3, I think, is 50. So the first angle is actually 50 degrees, which means the second angle is going to be 130. So those would be my two angle measures. All right, we survived. We made it. Toodles.